Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good day, Dr. Sharon Lewis, and welcome to the Valder BB Show to talk about a very important subject. I'm live here from Dallas, Texas, and I've got a great audience for you. My audience is composed of 86% women, so you've got the attention of these women. Let's talk about ovarian cancer. So ovarian cancer affects approximately 22,000 women every year in the United States. Unfortunately, we don't have a good screening mechanism for this disease, so most women are diagnosed at advanced stages, and that's why about 14,000 women every year, unfortunately, will succumb to this illness. There are definitely some important preventative things to talk about, as well as the signs and symptoms, and I'd love to really educate your listeners about that today. Okay, let's talk about the group that's most affected by ovarian cancer. Is it by rate, I'm sorry, age or ethnicity? What, what group is that? Typically happens in women who are postmenopausal. So after menopause, there is a bit of a slightly older age of onset, but we do see younger women, uh, certainly premenopausal, that are diagnosed as well too. What are some of the signs, and before we get into the, the, the uh, uh, answers, but what are some of the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer? Because you know women will grin and bear pain. Of course. You know, it used to be known as the silent killer, but we actually know that there are symptoms that really could herald this disease. And in some of my patients, we see that these symptoms, unfortunately, are present for six, if not 12 months before they're actually diagnosed. So if women have a constellation of these symptoms, it's bloating, abdominal or pelvic pain, feeling full too quickly, or difficulty with urination, if these symptoms are happening on a repetitive, frequent basis, they absolutely need to see their gynecologist and have a CAT scan and really be worked up for ovarian cancer. I want my audience to know that Dr. Lewin is a board-certified gyne gynecologist oncologist. Okay, Dr. Lewin, let's get on with the question. Okay, what are some of the risk factors associated with ovarian cancer? So we do know that women who have a mutation in one of the BRCA genes or the BRCA genes have a very high risk for ovarian cancer. You might have heard about this from Angelina Jolie who really brought a lot of attention to this subject. But I really urge people to know their family and personal history. If there's a family history of ovarian cancer, for example, or many breast cancers or breast cancer at a young age, people definitely qualify for genetic testing and then we can definitely intervene before these cancers develop. We also know that obesity is a major risk factor for ovarian cancer as well as other cancers in general. Recent data has shown that really half of all cancers in the U.S. could be prevented if people stayed in an ideal body weight, ate healthy, exercised, really limited any alcohol or tobacco consumption. And then the last preventative effort that's really important to, to note is that we do think a lot of these ovarian cancers are actually starting in the fallopian tubes, which are these little tubes that hang off the uterus. So if any woman is undergoing surgery for benign reasons, like a hysterectomy or a tubal ligation, she should absolutely have her tubes removed as a way to help prevent ovarian cancers. That's uh, great news right there. Why is it important for us to visit our OBGYN on a yearly basis? So most women really prioritize everyone else in their family's health over their own. Um, and we do see that going to the gynecologist every year, really regardless of your age, of course starting around 18 or 21, is so important to prevent cancers and talk about good health and wellness. So a lot of women think after they have children they don't have to go to the gynecologist anymore, but that's absolutely not true. They definitely need to go every year. What's the latest of the um What's the significance of the latest FDA approval in advanced ovarian cancer? And what are some of the current treatments that we can discuss with our doctors? So if women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer, they absolutely need to see a GYN oncologist. 
Hopefully they're able to undergo surgery first to remove any visible areas of disease, followed by chemotherapy. The FDA has recently approved Avastin. It's made by Genentech, whom we're partnering with today. Uh, it's used in combination with chemotherapy for women who are newly diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Um, not only with chemotherapy, but as a maintenance strategy after chemotherapy. And it's been shown to really improve the outcomes for women with these dis this disease. There are some special side effects with this type of medication, things like elevated blood pressure, protein in the urine, wound healing issues, things that we can very easily manage. So women should definitely speak to their doctors about whether or not this is the right option uh, for their treatment. Okay, you guys stay with me because I'm going to give you a place to go online to get more information. But, Dr. Lloyd, Lloyd, I'd like to ask you, on a personal note of being a physician, an oncologist, how do we get comfortable with our oncologist? Because if we're coming in and we think something wrong, we're already scared. It's so intimate, even though it's life-threatening. So how do we get comfortable and build a relationship with our oncologist? That's a great question. I mean, building a relationship with your gynecologist first is so important. And I just want to empower women to really be advocates for their own health. Like really listen to your body. If you have a new symptom that you haven't experienced before and it's happening on a repetitive basis, you know, definitely advocate for yourself and talk to your doctor about it. And if you're not getting the proper attention that you need, you should see another physician. You know, really educate yourself on cancer prevention and wellness and ways to stay healthy. Um, and I just really advocate for people to really be their own advocates. That's a great advice coming directly from a reputable source. Where can my audience go online and find out more information? Remember, I told you, I said it incorrectly. I said 86% of my audience is women. I was corrected. It's 89%. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, resources like ovarian.org or our own website, the Lewinfund.org, definitely have information for people about this illness as well as others. Uh, so we'd be happy to provide more information for anyone interested. Dr. Lewin, this has been one of my best conversations of the week. Thank you for gracing that's the Valder so, BB Show. That's so nice. Thank you so much.